So a while back, Xbox had been experimenting with moving its games to PC. Now, if you go to Steam, I think the very best way to do this, and I went back to Steam here and I just looked at the Xbox games, there seems to be some kind of a chronological list on which games uh, you know, came out on PC and what dates they came out. You're going to see a game that's called The Maw or something like that. It was released in March 9th, 2009. This is when it was brought to Steam. I'm almost certain that this game was probably on Xbox way back in the day. If you notice, you can see it. Then you can see Fable, The Lost Chapters. And then as you go up, you see like a series of small games. This is 2013. This is 2011. So this is probably like the 360 trying to transition into the Xbox One days. The Xbox One comes around. Xbox has the huge mishap. I didn't even know about that. I remember wanting to choose my console at the time. And I was looking, talking to some friends about what games they played. And I selected the Xbox at first. I ordered it on Amazon. So me and my buddy were talking and I was like, dude, I ordered an Xbox. And he's like, dude, you know, here's what Xbox is about. But for the kinds of games that you play, I think a PlayStation might work. So we kind of looked through it and I was like, that's true. Canceled my order, got a PlayStation 4 with Uncharted Legacy bundle on there. Best console I ever had. It was actually the first console I spent my money on. And I think it was probably the best, you know, buy I could have actually made at the time. Xbox, on the other hand, they pretty much made their missteps and plummeted in many ways. I think this probably forced them to start thinking differently. If you notice, you start to see their games approach the PC platform. More of them are old games. And then, you know, somewhere around, you know, 2016, that's when you got to see a game come out with Xbox pretty much uncoupling itself from the console attachment. I think they were kind of wary about how their brand was going to pretty much go if their audience received it as, you know, they're no longer staying exclusive to the things that we hold dear at Xbox because they had just come out of one PR nightmare. So again, trying to go and say, well, you know, you can play our games on PC probably was not the best way to, uh, you know, go ahead and try to mitigate that thing from a public perception. So slowly but steady and surely their games were coming to PC at this time, too. Many were like, ah, Xbox is done. They're third party. They need to go away. They just need to go the way of Sega. They can't be making consoles anymore. And I don't know what it is. Maybe according to some I've heard, a lot of PlayStation fans were disgruntled Xbox fans. And even many of them, actually, they, they played their hand on the Video Game Fight School channel. You guys know I've made probably 100, 100 videos, you know, talking about PlayStation and all of this stuff. And many of them have come out with some of the weirdest arguments, because I'll be talking about one thing over there. The next thing you know, they'll just come up with the argument. Well, 10 years ago, Xbox sucked. And I think what they're pointing to is around this window here where they were angry at Xbox because everybody was eating Uncharted and God of War and all these, you know, timed third party exclusives on PlayStation while they were not seeing anything in terms of those games they wanted to play. So many jumped ship. Some stayed nonetheless. Those ones that stayed, I think they gave Xbox the boost and confidence to say it seems we're doing something right because their games started to pretty much hit these different platforms and get exposed to other people who were playing them and making them money. Because again, as I always say, 70 is greater than 30. It's kind of like the theme. Maybe I should just name, you know, my YouTube channel 70 is greater than 30 because I want PlayStation to start bringing their games to PC so that they can make money and compete with Xbox, who's dominating on them, dunking on them basically daily. Because if you go look at the daily active users that are playing their games on PlayStation, it's an Xbox. Sorry, it's two Xbox games, right? That's your, you know, your competition dunking on you because they're not playing any of your games, which is crazy because Nintendo is laughing at you. Just so that you know, that's, that's how I actually define it. That being said, all of this together put Xbox in a position where it had already unlocked what it needed to make up for the consoles it didn't sell, to make up for the PR nightmare, and to put itself where PlayStation eventually recognized that its capability to develop and to supply a multi-game approach, which was console and PC at the time, was something very strong. But PlayStation was comfortable. The PC market had not necessarily taken off at the time. And I remember around this time, I was playing one game, Tom Clancy's The Division 1. I was playing it on the PlayStation 4. Let me see if I can find you guys some footage from back in the day because, you know, some of you don't believe me. Actually, I found one for The Division 2 from PS4 days. I didn't have the strength to dig all the way back to 2016 on my other YouTube channel. 
And I was playing the first division iteration on the PlayStation, you know, on the PlayStation 4. And it was at 30 FPS. And, you know, other content creators and even other gamers were playing the game at 60 FPS. And it just looked better. And for a game I was heavily invested in, I thought, I, I need to go to PC. Plus, they're not paying to play online. So I went to PC. I remember that time, guys, you know, story time. I did not necessarily, you know, enjoy playing on a mouse and keyboard. So I downloaded a little, you know, thing called DS4. What that lets you do is you could plug your PlayStation 4 controller to Windows and it would interpret it as an Xbox controller on any platform and you could play with it. But The Division is a very interesting game because, you know, it has like so many toggles and stuff. So in order for me to kind of, re, you know, refresh my mouse and keyboard skills, because I used to play on a keyboard before, <laughs> I know it was crazy. I put my PS4 controller on the side and then I'll play the division by hand on my mouse and keyboard. And if I got into trouble, I pick my controller back up and I was like, oh, my gosh, I got out of trouble. And I put it down and I played the game again, leveled up my character and I was able to kind of, you know, get my mouse and keyboard coordination back in place. And when you think about this, though, you know, when you think about this particular shift going on, the PC market was growing at the time and Xbox recognized that as they recognized that it pretty much changed the game for them. They went in and they started to leverage PC as pretty much part of their own ecosystem. In fact, they didn't even bother until now. They haven't really bothered. For many of you who may actually think, you know, that somehow Xbox is like this big thing on PC, actually, in all honesty, not really. They're just leveraging Steam because I got to tell you, this is their Xbox platform. It sucks. Like in terms of the offerings on the PC side, it's not robust at all. They really could not be bothered. <laughs> this is how crazy it is. They really could not be really bothered too much to bring like similar offerings of third party games. And when I say it sucks, it's tongue in cheek. Their games are here. They all work. They play fine. I've seen some people say that they're buggy. That's nonsense. I'm just talking about how much the offering is compared to, say, maybe Steam. Right. So the amount of third party games that you will see on your Xbox console, it's hard for you to find them on your Xbox app PC. That's where Xbox has loads of work to do in this regard. Like, there's no doubt about that. So they still do prioritize the console in that regard. I know some console players have said they're going to PC, but go to PC and then come back and then talk to me. You will realize that, no, they still have a slice and a segment to keep their console still, like, unique in a sense. And I've seen a lot of people say they just need to stop making consoles. You have to really experience the Xbox system to know ecosystem to know what you're talking about. That's why I bought an Xbox. I didn't want to be a dumb dumb saying stuff about Xbox and people call me, a, you know, <laughs> I'm being nice to myself, an idiot. Right. So in seeing that, I was like, oh, that's actually interesting because you're not going to find a lot of the third party offerings on a PC store. They're keeping the similar agreements. Now, are they going to expand? They have the capability to, but I don't know if they're interested in. They'd rather just let Steam handle all that logistics. And so they just focused on making that a subscription service, uh, you know, provider in terms of, you know, the PC platform. But I think what they need to do now is they just need to go ahead and expand it so that it actually almost imitates what is accessible and available to the console side. Now, if that makes, say, a console player say, I'm going to leave my console and go to PC, they're not going to be bothered. You're just going to be basically where you are, just on a different, you know, machine, if that's the case or if that's what you want to do. But seeing how this particular move has pretty much moved Xbox to a very interesting place in this whole gaming conversation has been very interesting. I think now the jokes that were being made, oh, Xbox is already third party and all that. I think that joke is now very evident that PlayStation just doesn't have anything to be able to respond to this just yet. I've said that since PlayStation is copying Xbox, because, you know, I, made, I remember making a video where I said, you know, uh, PlayStation copies Xbox at every turn. Some people said, no, PlayStation put their game on PC first. You know, some PlayStation fans, they can't, they, nothing Xbox can do can be good in their minds. Like, it, there's never, the, it's it's never, like, PlayStation is the one and only innovator and everything, but that's because they, you know, they just think that way. And, you know, I guess that's maybe what you've been led to believe. So when I said that, they were like, no, PlayStation put its own games for, you know, on PC first. Uh, PlayStation should, you know, be the ones that do A, B, C, D, and E. And I was like, okay, whatever the heck it is you're talking about. Now that we've all, it's all been said and done, they just need to follow or they just need to do what everybody else is doing, which is pretty much go ahead and, uh, you know, get their own PC storefront. <laughs> That's all they need to do. It's really not that hard <laughs> for them, uh, you know, in that regard. Because I think what you're going to see is, 
This is how the market is going to move. They're all going to just follow Xbox in doing what they're doing. Xbox already has a PC platform. It's not worried. It uses it as a subscription, you know, a de delivery device for Game Pass for PC players. Then eventually it might start expanding its third party platform, but it eh, seems like it's not interested. It wants its consoles to continue to get that, you know, support. And I've seen Xbox players say, well, they're not going to support the console guys again. This is a PC player that's telling you that what I'm what I'm seeing here and I have an Xbox to compare that they are looking at their Xbox consoles as something that they want to keep unique in small little ways. They've been doing it for a while. I remember even I think the Game Pass PC just got better recently. They used to be able they used to hold off games that a lot of games would be available on console Game Pass that you could not get on PC Game Pass. But now I think they're probably seeing maybe, you know, it might not be worth it. But hey, who knows? So at the end of the day. If PlayStation wants to basically come into this market and play, it really needs that PC pipeline. Even if it doesn't want to give 70% to Steam, it needs to go ahead and handle its PC store itself. But I think there's an expense and a cost in doing that because now what you're going to do is not only are you going to now bring your games to PC, you now have to actually spend money and make your teams do a day one port of which Xbox has been able to successfully put that into its pipeline. And now it's already blazing past you. Every Xbox game is going to get its PC port. And so you now have to keep up PlayStation. And, you know, maybe you've got to get another Nixus on your side because Iron Galaxy, when they did The Last of Us 1, it wasn't just it. So this is crazy, though, to see that the advancements that have been made in gaming and the advancements that Xbox made to look like Steam because that's who they copied. It's not like they were just, you know, this. I mean, yeah, they were putting PC games on there probably before Steam, but Steam providing a service and a storefront that is significant in that regard, you know, it's definitely something that I would say, you know, Xbox probably aspires to be like, and it seems like they're making moves to do so. But anyways, as I've said many times, let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Talk to me and I would love to hear your thoughts because I think this is actually something that's actually very interesting in terms of how business is going to be run from now henceforth. Peace out.